Do you want to learn how to create a double cross hotbar for all your abilities, design a better controller UI, and configure your controller settings to give you the best experience in Final Fantasy XIV? With all of our fellow controller players flocking to Final Fantasy XIV via Xbox, it's time to update one of the most viewed videos on my channel. My name is Bunboss and this is the number one controller guide for Final Fantasy XIV. Make sure to save this guide as a reference and you can find the timestamps down below. Let's drop in on ground level. When initially starting the game, you'll be given a choice right off the back of mouse or keyboard or controller. You can change at any time under a character configuration in the top left in order to swap. We will then be left with this setup of just one cross hotbar. Our goal is two cross hotbars. There is some preliminary settings we will have to adjust first. Under control settings, we'll adjust a few quality of life settings, like skipping previously viewed cutscenes when re-entering dungeons, trials, etc. We'll make sure to enable full auto target, which will allow you to automatically target an enemy when clicking an ability, which is a huge quality of life added just within the recent year. For target type, we'll be type 2, which is cone. I have messed with this multiple times, and I don't know if it actually makes a difference, but better safe than sorry. Let's also turn on ground targeting settings, which when you press the action button twice, it will execute. This will allow you to use abilities that have a ground target first to simply place it by pressing that button again. Nine out of 10 times, you'll wanna place this where you are at instead of messing around with it and moving it during battle. This affects multiple roles and jobs that have this kind of ability mechanic. White Mage's Asylum is one such ability. You can also limit break that like and subscribe button down below in order to help support the channel for free. We will move next to filters. This is really handy when you have a weapon sheathed or drawn and allows you to customize what you wanna be able to target during what type of content. While sheathed, I generally keep everything on except minions and signs, as well as pet slash minions, just because it's a hassle to accidentally target those when you're trying to do something else. When drawn, I keep it to all enemies and aggroing enemies, as well as duty specific enemies. You'll still be able to manually cycle through targets, but you don't want to auto target an NPC, which tends to happen in instances. You can try your hand at filter customization. I initially use this, but I find it to be not as needed later down the road, so I don't mess with it too much as a longtime player myself. But if you're really into like hyper optimization, then you can mess around with this. Under character tab, we'll make sure to change all of the battle effects to show limited other than own, or you could be lost in a whirlwind of abilities constantly being thrown at you while you're trying to find yourself in the chaos. I do know some people who play with these all on, and this is entirely personal preference. We will go to the UI under general tab. We'll be able to disable settings like display pop-up help and active help windows, which just stop all the tutorials from happening. You can keep this enabled if you're brand spanking new to the game. We will also turn off recommendations and play guide. Speaking of recommendations, I'll be updating my controller playlist to have all the most updated job guides and relevant content. So you can always go there and check out any guides that you need that are controller related. There is only one setting under the HUD tab that you want to turn on and that will display targets remaining HP percentage, which will show you your enemies remaining HP. This is a great indicator where you're at in the fight and some boss battles have certain mechanics that happen at certain HP percentages. I won't mess with too many other things as we have entirely different screen in order to edit the HUD layout, which I much prefer. Under display names, I like to turn all of these to when targeted instead of always show as it just keeps the game generally cleaner, but this is personal preference. This includes NPCs, Alliance members and raids, my own name, enemies, etc. Now on to the important hotbar settings. We have two different types of hotbars in Final Fantasy XIV. Hotbars, which are generally for mouse and keyboard users, and cross hotbars, which are for controller users. Controller users can technically see hotbars for visual cues and countdowns or to keep track of abilities and timers, but you cannot access your controller with them. You can only use your controller on these sideways eight buttons that represent the buttons on your controller. So this first section will most entirely disregard for our beginner setup, but there are some really cool things you can do if you have access to both mouse and keyboard and controller. Most console players should use a keyboard that connects to your console. This one comes highly recommended for many of my Discord and Final Fantasy friends, so I'll leave a link down below. We will move on to the sharing tab. This is very important for my particular setups that I do for my job controller guides. These are used by many players, but by no means the only way. 
What sharing means is that across hotbars three through eight will be shared by all jobs. So any abilities, macros, etc., that you put on these cross hotbars, no matter what job you switch to, you will have access to them. Cross hotbar one and two, we will use for our specific job abilities. We can ignore this section of hotbars since controller users mainly use and access cross hotbars. Once done, we'll move over to the cross tab, which is basically our hub for controller players. I personally keep hotbar help off, which is showing the ability names over the ability picture. Eventually, these kind of get in the way, so I like to keep them off. The rest of these settings are fine as is, as they won't really affect your playthrough. For my particular setups that you'll find in all of my controller setup videos for all the jobs, you'll need to use the hold option, which means when pressing R2, L2 to access across hotbar, you'll need to hold the trigger in order to access it. Toggle is where you can press the button once and release, and the cross hotbar will stay open until you make an input. I do not like toggle, and toggle does not work with the setup I use for controllers. It is a good option for those with arthritic or may have hand issues. Cross hotbar display type, we will keep it at D-pad plus actions, which just keeps your buttons and the cross hotbars how it is, with D-pad and the letters on either side. D-pad, D-pad doesn't make sense to me personally, but it may for some. You will enable always display cross hotbar return to when pressing a button, which means when you access the top cross hotbar we will set up, it will automatically put you back at the bottom one after your input. And position cross hotbar separately, which will allow us to adjust this in the HUD layout screen. The input timer I set between 45 and 55, which is just related to how quickly you need to double press R2 or L2 in order to access the cross hotbar. The lower the number, the quicker you have to press it, and the higher number, the slower you can press it. We see that at 15, it's almost impossible to access the second cross hotbar, while at 85, it's too fast and I can't even access the bottom cross hotbar, so 50 seems to be the perfect balance. The last and most important part is the custom tab. This brings it all together. We will enable the expanded hold controls. This essentially says when you press and hold the left trigger, then the right trigger, you'll gain access to cross hotbar three on the left side, and vice versa, right trigger to left trigger, you'll gain access to three on the right side. Cross hotbar three, if you remember, is our shared cross hotbar for all the jobs. So this allows us to put abilities like teleport, limit break, return, and many others on this cross hotbar that we're gonna need for everything. We will enable cross hotbar with simultaneous left trigger and right trigger double tap. This means when we press left trigger twice, which we just set up on the previous tab, we'll gain access to cross hotbar to left. And when you press right trigger twice, you'll gain access to cross hotbar on to right. This is the one setting that a lot of people forget, and that's to enable direction and action buttons here to gain full access to all 16 slots on the second cross hotbar. If you do not tick this, then you only have these outer four on each side. Do not worry, I'll give you an example on how to put skills on these cross hotbars as well. If you want to support the channel, make sure to limit break through that like button and comment as this really helps more people access this video. Next, we move on to HUD layout where we get to mess with the UI cleanliness, which is my biggest pet peeve in this game. Of course, this is solely up to preference. I'm just going to show you what I do and then you can adjust to what you like for your game. Remember that hotbars 1 and 10 are for mouse and keyboard users for the most part, so we're going to move all these to the side. The only thing we have to absolutely make sure of is that on hotbar 1, there is this little lock next to it that affects all of our cross hotbars and hotbars alike, which is kind of stupid, but make sure this lock is unlocked in order to drag and drop if you have a mouse and keyboard for your console. Next, we're just going to move and shrink a lot of this extra stuff like map, party list, etc. as I play on a controller on a PC, so I don't need these to be too big at all. You can just hit this settings cog and adjust the percentage of size with how you like it. This is complete personal preference. I also like to turn the job gauges into simple mode in order to keep the UI a lot cleaner. Be wary that even though you can see these job gauges now, they won't actually show up on the screen until you unlock them for that level and job. If you want a full UI guide, then I will link that down below. Now let's focus on these cross hotbars. You can click the cross hotbars to make them show on the HUD layout and I'll move all the mouse and keyboard hotbars to the left and right and shrink our HP, MP, and experience bar down below. This cross hotbar is our cross hotbar one and is extended left and right. This disjointed cross hotbar is our cross hotbar 2, as dictated by our settings. 
I personally like to shrink these cross hot bars down and then directly stack the other two aligned with the boxes. This keeps it more visually accurate for when I'm going through a rotation. Some do like to keep these staggered, so it's complete personal preference, but I prefer this up and down method. When you have this setup, we are ready to move on to putting abilities on these cross hot bars. Make sure to save your HUD layout and exit. Now using left trigger and right trigger, you can access this bottom one in the simultaneous double press of left trigger or right trigger will access the top one. The number one question I get is I cannot put abilities on my second slash top hot bar. Why not? Even though we can access through our setup for pressing the abilities, it is a visual cross hop bar in a sense. If you hold right trigger or right bumper on the Xbox controller, you will see this one through eight pop up. These represent your eight cross hop bars that controller players have access to. You will need to switch to your second cross hop bar, which will now show up on the bottom in order to put abilities on it. So as you can see, we will do this with sprint. I will hit my right trigger and hit the settings button on controller, which turns on edit mode. I will click the button for sprint to which will now allow you to select a new slot. I will hold R1 and go to my second cross hop bar and then put the sprint button on my Y button for my Xbox controller. Now you can see that sprint is on our bottom cross hop bar and top hop bar because you are R on the second cross hop bar. Now switching back to the first cross hop bar, you can see that sprint is no longer there and it shows up on our second cross hop bar, which is now accessible by double pressing my right trigger twice holding and then I can press Y or triangle if you're on PS5 to hit sprint. This is just an example on how to put abilities and move abilities. I personally prefer sprint on my cross hop bar three as that's going to be accessed by all my jobs. You can do the same thing with all the cross hop bars. So if you want to put something on cross hop bar three, you would just hold R1, go to cross hop bar three and put an ability there and go back to your cross hop bar one. And you can now access it by holding either right trigger than left trigger or left trigger than right trigger. And you'll see it pop up. If you want to place more abilities, you can go to settings, actions, and traits and place as many different abilities as you want. These will change over time as you figure out what you personally like to access in game and what's important. You can have an emote cross hop bar or a macro cross hop bar. The customization is endless. I use my third cross hop bar for all my quick access buttons like character, timers, inventory, duty finder, teleport mounts, etc. These are buttons that I'm gonna need on every job regardless of what I'm doing. Now let's cover some really important one-off controller tips when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV. The first thing is once you equip a job stone, level 30 for a lot of the base jobs, and later on you'll just unlock the job in the job stone from a quest, your cross hotbars for one and two will reset, which is super annoying. Don't be shocked when this happens, and I highly recommend once you do that, you find one of my controller guides to help you set up the jobs cross hotbar. It will be from level 90, but you'll have access to all the abilities once you have your job zone on. You can set these abilities even if you're not at that level yet. I carefully craft each of these to give players a really good foundation for abilities based on rotation at any level. So you can use these at low level or high level. They will just down sync with what content you're doing. The second thing I can recommend is party list reorganization depending on the job you're playing. This allows you to switch what roles and even what jobs fall on the party list, which can be really important for critical party buffs. Healers can have tanks aligned to the top, dancers can have DPS lined up to top. This allows for great customization depending on what job you're playing in order to save yourself countless presses on the D-pad. You can also adjust this by which role you are, which allows you to not have to switch this around whenever you go from tank, healer, or DPS. You can find this under character configuration, UI settings, party list tab. The question I get all the time is how do I use D-pad and run around at the same time if I need to move and heal? This is how I personally tackle it when running and using these other abilities. I use my right thumb to hit any button on my left D-pad. I personally don't have the most gigantic hands, but I don't seem to struggle doing this when occasionally needed. But you can always remap your buttons to better suit your healing or job needs. I don't find many instances in game where that is necessary even in the earlier stages, so it's not something I personally struggle with, but that's just simply moving abilities around that work for you. Putting less used abilities on that side of the controller could be a solution. If you have any more in-depth questions, you can catch my live streams weekly on either YouTube or Twitch as I've been working to build this portion of my content creation up. I want to thank all of the support I've gotten on my controller videos and guide videos as it really keeps me motivated and I'm happy to contribute to the community. I'm going to keep these all up to date even into Dawn Trail, so make sure to limit break through that subscribe button in order to see those videos coming out. 
I hope this controller guide helps all of our new console players and controller players enjoy Final Fantasy XIV to the fullest extent possible. If you want to watch any of my controller guide setups, you can find those things in the controller playlist in the description box or by clicking here.